بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم سورہ بنی اسرائیل چیپٹر سیونٹین ورسز ایٹی ایٹ ٹو نائنٹی فائیو قرآن کین ناٹ بی دا پروڈکٹ آف دا ہیومن انٹریکٹ اینڈ دس از دا مین تھیم آف ٹو ڈیز پریزنٹیشن اینڈ دیز آر دا ریفرنسز اینڈ دس از آر کانٹیکٹ ان کیس دیر از اینی کویری اور کوشچن ریگارڈنگ دس پریزنٹیشن اور اینی آف آر پریویس پریزنٹیشن ان فیکٹ اف اینی ون وشز ٹو to contact Idarat Lu Islam, then this is the best contact. Recap verses 83 to 87. When man does not understand the guidance of Wahi, his conduct is very impulsive. When he enjoys the favors of physical life, he tends to become very remote from the need for guidance. And when he suffers a loss due to the man-made systems, he falls into despair. This is the state of affairs under man-made systems where chains become imposed on human beings either through the wrong system itself or through wrong belief systems. Instead of questioning the purpose of life and looking for guidance to get rid of these chains, man remains contented with the limited freedom he gets under man-devised systems to live his life. We discuss some aspects that we should question as much as possible to every aspect of life and not to be fearful of finding about it and inquire about it from others because questioning then leads to finding answers. Only through the guidance of the Quran can man, can man acquire that freedom which he deserves within the limits defined by the permanent values. Only the laws of Allah as external criteria can provide guidance towards that freedom which is meant to be enjoyed by each human being in this life. Ru is through the Amr of Rabb and is the wahi of Allah sent to mankind via the Qur'an. Its reality and form is beyond the reach of man, but its content and teaching can be understood by every human being. An overview of today's presentation. The Qur'an is wahi from Allah and is not the product of human intellect. Those who do not consider it to be a book of guidance for mankind should try to produce anything like the Qur'an. They will discover themselves that they simply cannot produce the permanent values, divine attributes, and principles revealed here, as these are complete and nothing is left out. Because if we try to look at these, uh, everything which is contained in the Quran, we can only add anything if there is something missing. And if we find everything is complete, then there is no need to look for something outside the Quran. And that is an important point which we will go through in our slides today. If something is complete and founded on evidence-based facts, nothing can be added to it. The Quran is also presented in such a form which provides education and training to the human intellect if it is studied by cross-referencing its verses in order to understand their context within the framework of the system of deen. In order to benefit from the Qur'an, it must be taken as one complete whole and not pick and choose to support one's own biases. And when we say that it is a complete whole, it should not be accepted mechanically. It should be accepted through our own study, through our own observation, and by looking at the evidence all around us and within us. To have Iman in the Qur'an, there must not be any external or internal compulsion. For example, desire for miracles, supernatural events, fear, physical persuasion, conformity, emotive reaction, etc. And we know it that the Quran emphasizes that human beings must not have any kind of fear. The only fear they should have is to go against the laws of Allah. And as a consequence of going against the laws of Allah, their self will not be able to develop. All the messengers of Allah were ordinary human beings, and if they could follow the revelation from Allah, so can we. And this is another important point, and we will discuss it in last few slides. First verse of today's presentation, the human mind cannot produce anything like the Quran. Kullayin ajtamate inso and the biggest proof of its being from Allah is that even if all the people in the world, urban and nomadic people all together, make a combined effort to produce a Quran like the 
like the Quran, they will be unable to do this, even if they become helpers of each other to any extent. Further reflections on this verse? We had covered this aspect in detail under verse, and we can have a look on this presentation which we had under Surah Yunus. There are far more details covered over there. I've taken some slides from there as well. There we went over a number of points of interest which refer to the fact that human intellect simply cannot devise and write any of the laws, values and attributes revealed in the Quran. It is because it cannot think like it as it starts its journey of life with a limited intellectual and emotive outlook. Secondly, whatever man does, his own emotive bias influences his thinking. Now, this is an important point that human beings have those emotive biases and the way we, our outlook is without Allah's guidance, we have to overcome those emotive biases. That is, first we have to recognize those emotive biases and the problems which these emotive biases create in the world, we should become aware of them. And then we should look at the procedure and process given by the Quran to remove those biases. All those efforts which human beings have made to write something like the revelation have failed miserably and we can see their living examples in the world, for example, the books of Ahadis, the books in the Bible, books of other religions, books written by humanists, etc. And we can read as many books as possible within the limited or finite life we have and we will see that the Quran will help to identify the limitations of human uh, intellect. And all these books point to that. And they will only be looking at some small part of human life. None of these can help in the direction of establishing a system for mankind which can relieve hum humanity from fear, huzan, chaos, conflicts, wars, imbalances, mutual rivalry, exploitation, bloodshed. The answer to this is very simple i.e. there is no guidance within each one of us, therefore we need an external source of guidance which is totally free from human biases and prejudices. Next point is, here the challenge is thrown at the whole of mankind, whether urban or rural dwellers are both to produce anything like the Quran, i.e. which can help with the establishment of a system free from fear and huzan. And human mind does go in that direction because we, in our pursuit of... Uh, of deen as a system, some people we have come across who think that human beings can get guidance even without the Quran. And human intellect and reasoning power is good enough for providing them guidance. But if we see the practical application of human intellect and reasoning and its, uh, its rational side, then the world which is around us, they can't create a better world than that. And we can appreciate all the problems this world has, which is created by human intellect. Why does this issue need to be addressed? There are further reflections on this aspect. In the world, thousands of books are printed and published each year on possibly every subject of interest. And some of these books are written by highly intellectual human beings, but none claims to be the complete book of guidance for mankind. Why? Then the Quran itself states that when this guidance is presented before these people, they say, When verses are presented before them, they say, we heard and we too can produce something like this. All it contains is tales of the ancients. And I've come across people like that who think that there are only stories mentioned in the Quran there is nothing else because they are not looking for guidance. And this is where Parvez did a great favor to humanity that he has put down everything as a system in his books. And he has also cross-referenced it so that our life becomes easier and we don't have to think in order to take out the system because there's a lot of effort required in order to present the Quran as a system and to convince others. And that is why these books are extremely helpful. These actually shorten our effort on this path. And that is the way human intellect develops. Previous people do some work and then we capitalize on that.
Muslims and non-Muslims all peruse the Quran and read these verses, but none can produce something like the Quran. Not in terms of its style or prose, but in terms of the laws, attributes, and values it contains in relation to the system of deen. People who have compiled a hadith and later declared these to be wahi khafi, which means they say that it is a secret wahi or a concealed wahi, and Quran is an evident of jalli wahi of Allah i.e. like the Qur'an, just cast a glance on the state of their contents. If we read these books in the light of the modern-day developed human intellect, we will be gross, grossly disappointed. In fact, best way to check anything which is human hands have written, we can use the Qur'an and assess its value in terms of as guidance. In fact, through the Quranic light, we can assess and evaluate the standard of the intellectual acumen of all the books written by human minds. Just compare these with the books written by Parvez expounding Deen Islam based on the Quran. No human being has been able to accept its challenge. We do not have any inner guidance and each one of us progressively learns according to the means available to us. We can only gain limited knowledge via our senses and perception through the use of our intellect and our our efforts based on our resources in some field of interest related to our finite physical life. And we can see that, that there are different disciplines, for example, under science in which human beings put in their best. And these human beings cannot grasp all these subjects because our life is finite and our resources are finite and also our intellectual capabilities are finite. And that is why it is important that in order to optimize our efforts in terms of creating a system, Quran helps us to optimize our efforts. Physical death is a fact of life. We die at some stage during our life. This puts a deadline on our existence in this world. We need external guidance in a complete form to obtain the maximum out of our life and which can provide rational answers to all questions in relation to our creation that is body plus our self, its purpose and destination, man device systems and their limitations, any alternative system, time scales, accountability, and above all, the possibility of the life of the hereafter. Next point is life of the hereafter, it factually exists. And this is as students of the Quran is very important that we should keep thinking about it, that life in the hereafter exists. And if it exists, and is missing from the man-made system, that means the man-made system will always be, will always have inherent limitation. The Quran provides an outline of this life and links it with our life at the level of the self in this world. Any human thought which does not take into account the life of the hereafter of the Quran is a very raw thought and cannot even comprehend the salient parts of the Quranic message. Because all those cognitive abilities which are related to thinking about it and then working righteously towards this aim, those will never develop, those will never manifest. And as a result, our, we can never ever be able to establish the system of deen. Because we will not possess that those cognitive abilities which are required to establish the system of deen. The human mind has dissonances at a fundamental level and these lead to the creation of zan and which is, means we know doubts, uncertainties, conjectures, skepticism, suspicions, all those uncertainties which are created in human mind and one is not sure whether this thing will work or not, those can only be removed through the Quran. This kind of cognitive makeup needs to eliminate the effects of these internal aberrations to think clearly. The state of the human self is such that whatever we write last year, we start to revise it next year. And we can see that there are countless revised editions by the same authors. Because as human intellect, intellect's horizon expands and he gains more experience, more education and training, then they are going to revise whatever they have written previously. And we have seen it even on this platform that as we are moving along, our vision is getting better and better. The breadth of our understanding keeps increasing with experience and reading. The concept of Allah as an ultimate reality, not being aware of this concept or not being willing to accept it will lead to not developing ourself. Its absence cannot give us that developed self which is solely linked to this model. 
why could Arabs not accept the challenge of the Quran? If Arabs had accepted this challenge and had managed to compile some book to counter the Quran, all confrontation and fighting would have ended. Despite this challenge of the Quran and their being linguists, they could not accept it and failed to produce anything like it. And we know it that Arabic as a language was well developed at that time and was able to accept Quran within its folds and interpret it. But despite that, that they were good linguists and they had a good control over their language, they were not able to produce anything like this because the principles which are given in the Quran, the laws, those are facts of life. And these are coming from Allah, whose self is, should I say, from human point of view, fully developed. And what the Quran was telling us was reality as a whole for implementation as a system of deen. And even to understand that, we need a number of years to come to grips with its facts. Instead, what they witnessed was that those who accepted its guidance not only changed themselves into eminent human beings, but they also stood up for the cause of Allah against their relations, friends, neighbors, siblings, parents, wives, husbands, children. Because that infused a new life in them. And we have gone through some of these aspects previously as well, that when we follow the Quran, understand its values willingly, then the change sets in within us. And we start noticing that change when we compare to our previous position where we were and where we are now. And the Quran also puts a clear path in front of us called Sirat Mustaqeen. They continued to oppose this message for two decades and went to war with the Mu'mineen even when they had migrated from Mecca. However, they still failed to meet this challenge of the Quran. The Quran has summed up the reasons for this. They were convinced of its being al-Haq, but their pride and arrogance prevented them from accepting it. And in one of the verses, Quran has pointed to this fact, وَجَاهَدُوا بِهَا وَاسْتَائِكَ نَتْحَا أَنفُسُهُمْ ظُلْمًا وَأَلُوبًا And they rejected those signs in iniquity and arrogance, though their selves were convinced thereof. So they were internally convinced that what is being told and the new system which is being proposed under these permanent values is the right one. And they recognize that their system is based on injustice. But because of their arrogance and haughtiness, they did not want to accept it. Acceptance of this challenge may lead to guidance. This challenge of the Quran has been to mankind for all times. No one has accepted this challenge so far. Why? A finite mind cannot think like an infinite, fully developed intellect. It can understand it using its rational side, but that too after freeing it from all personal biases and proclivities. When we become a moment precisely as is defined by the Quran, only then does the Quran reveal the intrinsic value of ourself, and then this self enables itself to understand its guidance and the need for the system of deen. So it is not an overnight change that I said that I said Shahada and I have become a Muslim. Not at all. We have to accept the Quran over a period of time based on evidence and through its study and by coming together. And all those facets, all those aspects which are connected with coming to together can never ever be grasped if we are pursuing this goal individually. Before having this self, it just reached it without coming to grips with its relevance, never mind producing any part similar to it. Even to know this fact, we need to delve into the finer aspects of the Book of Allah. And this is where the heart and mind come together to recognize that only Allah can be the writer of this book. This aspect we have explained previously as well through some examples. But over here, I will, I will go over another example is that even if we have studied the Quran, and we know that it is presenting something very different from what the human beings think. If we think it is not for us, then our, mind, our heart is not into it. Our mind has understood the problem, but because the heart is putting up resistance, therefore we will not come to it. So both mind and heart must come to the Quran together, only then we will be able to accept Iman in its value system. Another related point is that the Quran transformed those who accepted Iman and followed it. For example, in relation to the Messenger, it says, Ma kunta tadri mal kitabu wal imanu. 
you did not know what is the book and what is Iman. It's a very important statement of fact about the messenger himself, that he had no clue about the book and Iman before he started getting benefit from the revelation of the Quran. And then it states, وَإِنَّكَ لَا تَحْدِي أَلَى سِرَاتِ مُسْتَقِيمِ Verily, you do guide to Sirat al-Mustaqim, which means through Iman, he had come to know what Sirat al-Mustaqim is, and then he was able to explain to others. So it is important that if we want to explain to others, we should ourselves be having Iman and then know what exactly is Sirat al-Mustaqim. And it is not difficult. We have gone through this, uh, this aspect previously as well, but this is something which will keep coming up again and again, and we should try to repeat it to ourselves. And when we are explaining to others, we have to refer them to various verses and then explain to them through the, the aspect of self-development. The issue of completeness of the Quran. Now over here, I have used this schematic from our previous presentation. I thought it is quite good. The Quran is a complete and divisible whole from beginning to end as the book of guidance. It needs to be taught and learned as an academic book and with a view to establish deen as a system. Introducing anything which is not compatible with its formula will make its effects null and void, and this is called shirk. Since it deals with human cognitive transformation, hence we need to be fully aware of what ought to be in relation to what it is. So that means that when we are going through the Quran, and studying it, we should know that where we are in terms of our own uh, limitations, our own uh, inner problems of our psyche and thought process. For example, our prejudices, our dislikes, our envies, our hatred, hates, dislikes, and of course, all those problems which are related to negative proclivities, which are inbuilt within human beings, which we have to overcome using the Quran. And what ought to be is the path of Sarat al mustaqim and over here, this whole, uh, whole of this is now divided into three parts. And I've just put down comments here. To be aware of each part in the context of the whole is required in order to develop ourselves or the system of deen. Deen is a complete system based on the whole of the Quran. Because Quran, what it does is that it helps us to expand our horizon, our outlook, and our consciousness. And as a result, previously, what the things which were hidden from our eyes, which we were not paying attention to, now we start paying attention to that. We start looking at human issues in more detail, in finer detail. For example, previously, if we were looking at poor people as human beings who needed help, now we will be looking at the pain this poverty is causing to them and to their families and across the world. Can we introduce any product based on human intellect and emotions and get the same whole? And what it does is that if we are introducing it, it into the whole and breaking it into parts, then this wedge will be shirk. And as a result, we will not be able to benefit from the Quran as a whole reality. Few more comments to wrap it up. We had discussed another aspect, which was that the Quran cannot be translated. However, once we have understood the fundamentals of the of deen as a system, then we may be able to explain the meanings using these translations, and we, and we will also be able to detect the limitations of these translations. And the reason for these translations, which are literal at times, are that these become very disjointed, because these are not giving the context in which the things are being discussed in various verses. That is why the meanings of the Quran or the exposition by Alama Parvez is extremely useful. But now we have gone through these slides and we ourselves have been able to understand that how the verses flow from one to another and how we have to fill in the blanks in the light of by, by cross referencing with other verses in the Quran. From some of these brief explanations, we can see that the Quran is not the product of the human intellect as human thought evolves over a period of time through education, training, and experience. All this comes out of his own intellect, i.e. from inside the human intellect to the outer world. For example, if somebody is writing a book, then he or she is expressing their own understanding in that book or, create, or carrying out some literature research and consulting other books. 
and so it is a human human effort it's the human from inside whatever knowledge they have accrued they are bringing it out and putting down in writing while in the case of the quran whereas the quran is wahi which descends from outside and its source is non human i e allah himself so it cannot be the product of human human intellect it is coming from outside and there are number of verses on that where quran says that we are sending allah is sending this message to the messenger this should be a source of great appreciation and contentment that guidance has been provided to us to go through the challenges of this life with this certainty that we will reach our destination which is defined and earmarked for us by our rab and instead of questioning it once we have understood that this is a product this is not a product of human intellect and looking at our own limitations and weaknesses as human beings we should be actually very pleased and once we are fully convinced of it then our life becomes very easy just like if we are driving the car and we have for example google map and we have full assurance that this map will not misguide us and take us to our destination see how with how much confidence and trust we will be driving the car just to reiterate to take benefit from its guidance we need to make ourselves free from any preconceived ideas thoughts and beliefs and this is called la ilaha that is we get rid of all gods in our mind and only give space to what is given in the quran and approach it with the sole aim of seeking guidance next verse the quran has all that needed for guidance wala qad sarrafna lin nas fi hadhal quran min kulli matale fab aksar an nas illa kafura as has been stated above though you cannot understand the nature and form of wahi you can understand the realities presented by it very well for this we have adopted this style that we expound different matters again and again we present their various aspects repeatedly but despite this the condition of most people is that they keep on denying it without thinking and reasoning due to obduracy and prejudice so these are our own difficulties if we are not able to understand the quran or we find an inner resistance within us and as students of the quran this is a great instruction for us that how others are going to take it if they if people find some resistance we should be able to immediately understand that this person is not yet ready for receiving the guidance of the quran few more reflections if we look at the common place translation of this verse and it says and we have explained to man in this quran every kind of similitude yet the greater part of men refuse to receive it except with ingratitude by reading this translation a few thoughts come to our mind firstly is allah complaining about man and if so why did he produce such a creation in the first place knowing him to display kufr so this kind of kind of impression one can get from these translations and not only this verse if we go through these translations we will find that we will find the inadequacy of these translations which then do not help the individual who is seeking guidance secondly should we accept it as a fait accompli that it is meant to be like this and that there is no recourse to finding a solution as this is how it is meant to be the belief of takdeer finds its support from this view let us analyze the verse in three parts wala ka sarrafna lin nas fi hazal quran with a affirmation it is stated that in, that in this quran things are explained in such a way that if mankind those who choose to approach it for guidance cross referencing its verses then they will find what they are looking for i e guidance to solve the issues of their life and will find answers to those questions which arise in their hearts and minds regarding their own creation and existence regarding cross referencing we should remember that some of us might feel that this is a tedious and a difficult task but it is not even in our acquisition of knowledge in the man made world we have to consult number of references many papers in order to increase our knowledge but over there since we see immediate benefits we are willing to put in time over there and over here we should be as much at least interested in gaining knowledge because this is leading to 
to establishing the system of deen and getting rid of all the problems with the man-made system creates in the human world. Continuing with a few more reflections, this means that the Quran explains its guidance when we approach it with no preconceived beliefs and ideas and with an open mind genuinely looking for a higher purpose of life rather than merely existing at the physical level. An important point, I find it quite motivating that instead of living at physical life, we try to think through the issues and see that how can we solve the problems both at the physical level as well as at the cognitive level for every human being. If human beings do not want to deal with their intellectual side, that is fine. They can be given physical work, but at least we should be aware of the issues which are faced by each human being in the world. For this purpose, go through its verses with this in mind that the man-made systems cannot solve human problems. This is an evidence-based fact. Look at various verses and cross-reference them with other place and see how the issue is discussed. For example, on the basis of the permanent values and divine attributes. Then the verse states, Min kulle matalin. All kinds of similes are noted which help to explain these verses. The rational for each value and precept is noted, which is called its hikmat. We have gone through this aspect previously as well, but we can also use examples and similes from our own life as well. Because when we are studying the Quran and we are explaining to others, if we use some example from day-to-day -day life, then it, is, it, will, it will appeal to some people more. Because explaining concepts is difficult, but if we highlight it through some evidence, then it becomes easier. Then the verse concludes by stating, Faaba aksarun nase illa kufura. The greater part of people who receive the message display kufr through ingratitude. Faba. Faba is related to our inner, inner resistance, arrogance, and, and uh, disbelief, doubt, suspicions. All these things contribute to this kufr. This is an important point of guidance based on evidence of those who accept Iman and then are keen to spread and share the message. So it is a guidance for the students of the Quran that others will resist it. And they should, because when people listen to something new about which they haven't thought about, then why should, they leave, why should they leave their previous path? They have to have some need for it, some desire for it. And it is the job of, it is the task of the students of the Quran to learn to present it in a way so that it appeals to them. But end of the day, it is their choice, and one should not be discouraged if they do not come to the Qur'an. It is their choice, it is their life. Next are three verses covered, 90 to 92, demand for miracles. Quite interesting verses. These people, instead of pondering on the teaching of the Quran and trying to understand it through knowledge and vision, keep pursuing this childish demand of theirs that we will only be ready to accept your message when you show some miracles. For example, you wave your hand and a spring gushes forth from the earth or that you possess an orchard of dates and grapes and streams of water begin to flow therein at your command, or the way in which you constantly frighten us about the divine punishment, then make the sky fall on us in pieces, and in this way a sudden calamity descends on us, and then they will believe, because then what's the point of believing, because they will not be there anymore, they'll be dead. Or that you yourself cause Allah and the Malaika to stand before us, Quite interesting demands from these people which are noted in the Quran. Expanding these verses further. Human beings find it very difficult to come out of the physical domain of their life and as a result, when the message of the Quran is presented, inviting them to use their rational mind and reasoning, they respond with these kind of questions. If we look at these queries, we can assess the mental level of the addressee of the messengers. 
It is not to put them down, but rather to assess their approach in solving the problems faced by that society. So it is not to somehow look down upon these people. The fact is that these questions were arising in their mind and the level of knowledge and understanding they had, they had to put these questions forward. Not all, but some of them were putting these forward. They are obviously not listening to the solution which the Quran is offering them in view of the problems faced by the people in wider society. So they were more concerned that some miracle should be shown to them, then they will be able to consider what is noted in the Quran. Otherwise, they will carry on the way it is. So they didn't see any problems with the society and the injustices in that society. They evaluate the guidance put forward by the messenger in terms of physical possessions and conveniences. Even if the messenger has all, has all those things, how is this going to solve their short and long-term issues which are created by their own selves? In the first verse, they ask for a spring to gush forth from their land so that they could have Iman in the Quran. Of course, they valued the availability of water due to its paucity in their area, which was desert. Few more reflections. In the second verse, they go a step further even than this. Ask the messenger to produce an orchard which has dead trees and vineyards of grapes with water flowing between them. They appear to have seen these things elsewhere and instead of making efforts themselves according to the physical laws, they wanted some kind of miracle from the messenger. And we do come across this kind of mentality as well where people think that they can get something by merely reading the Quranic verses or doing some tasbih or weird or something like that. And that is their proclivity towards getting things easily in life. Whereas if they look at, for example, the secular West, they will see that they are already acquired all these miracles and under inverted commas. This also points to the kind of belief system they possessed where they thought that anyone representing the message of Allah should be able to do things in a time scale which humans cannot accomplish. Because their view was that this messenger is getting this, receiving this way directly from Allah and he's in direct contact with Allah. So somehow Allah will listen to him and whatever he wishes or whatever wishes we are conveying to him, he can get it done. And then we will be able to make some decision whether this messenger is speaking truth or not. Whereas the Quran says that the message itself should be looked at and see whether it is a product of human mind or not. And what is in it for their own good. Are they happy with the society in which they are living or they would like to get something better than that? We see this kind of argument from people who criticize, for example, Tulu Islam for doing nothing and expect some concrete results in the outer world without their own participation. And this is very interesting. All those people have come across who criticize Tulu Islam and its movement on this path. They don't want to be part of it. But they want that all those who are already part of it, somehow they should create some miracle like what the Quran is saying. This points to the fact that such people, despite reading the books of Parvez, simply have not comprehended the true gist of the message of Allah. I very reluctantly put down these couple of lines because this is something important to understand. And we come across this kind of mentality in the pursuit of this, uh, this campaign or this uh, movement where we are passing on the message of Allah to others and telling them that if you are fed up with a man-made system, there is an alternative which is given in the Quran. In the third verse, they increase the expanse of their demand by stating that a piece of the sky should fall down on them as a punishment for their wrong conduct. Not a very good desire i.e. this points to the fact that they do not hold themselves accountable for their wrong conduct and think that whatever the messenger is warning them about, they doubt it to be false. And they forget that they are going to die in any case, why they are hastening their own death through this uh, earlier punishment. Now continuing on these three verses, next they demand to see Allah and his malaika before their very eyes then they will decide whether to accept Iman or not. Quite a condition. When the correct concept of Allah and His laws is not before us, even now when science has developed reasonably well and the concept of physical laws is understood by educated people, 
those who follow religious practices still continue to believe in some kind of miracles and supernatural phenomena. And we can see that that those people who are deeply immersed in, in, in religious practices and, uh, and that they will not even believe in science. And that is, their, that is the problem of human intellect. Hereby recording these words from the past, the Quran is making us aware of the kinds of challenges we are likely to face on this path. It tells us to remain patient with these kinds of minds and give them time to rationally think over the guidance of Allah. A lot of patience is required. We need patience not only to learn the Quran, study it and change our own self, but we have to have a lot of patience in dealing with others as well. Many people take some time before coming back to the Quran and revisiting its message, which they had ignored initially as an impulsive reaction. And we went through this point as well that human beings have initially some impulsive reaction on a, on, a, on a short time scale and then they sit back and rationally go through it and realize that their reaction initially was not very good and not appropriate. Some who rejected due to their egoism and arrogance will, of course, never return to it. The loss is theirs and part of the self-development process is not to let this affect ourselves. All the time we should keep it in mind that each individual is responsible for his own self and we will not be held accountable for what others do. Our accountability ends with our own self. It is confined within our own self. Next verse, 1793, another miracle demanded. The meanings of the verse or that a palace of gold becomes prepared for you, or that you climb up towards the sky while we are watching. And not only climb up towards the sky, because from such a matter alone we will not accept Iman. Instead, bring down a pre-written book for us from there by reading which we will witness it, that it is indeed written by Allah. Quite a big demand. O Rasul, say to them that my Rabb is far above this, that he should demonstrate such things in order for you to accept Iman. And as far as I am concerned, I have never claimed to be divine. I am just a human being like you with this difference that I make the message of Allah reach you. Two things noted here, that a messenger of Allah is the Bashar and he is the messenger. Few more reflections on this verse. Another set of demands is quoted here in this verse in which they ask the messenger, to show them a palace adorned with gold. Obviously, they want it to appear miraculously before them, and then seeing this, they will accept Iman in the Quran. This points to their illogical thinking. Firstly, even if the messenger gets a palace, how will this be of benefit to them? It will not be their palace. And we, we see these kind of things in the religious domain where people expect and they talk about some kind of a palaces in the life of the hereafter not realizing that these palaces and uh, these buildings are for the physical self. And we do not know what kind of a body, what kind of a medium we will have in the hereafter. Secondly, what is the connection of a palace, that too of gold, with the guidance being provided, which relates to the wrong system under which they were all living? So they are concentrating on palaces and gold rather than seeing that the problems they have in the society and the injustices and imbalances in their society are unacceptable to Allah. And that is what the Quran is saying. By providing palaces to a few, the problems of the general public will still not become resolved. So they were very irrational minds. And we can see how uphill task is of the initial students of the Quran and Jamaat Mumini. Then they demand that the messenger should climb on a ladder up towards the sky and from there bring down a book for them written by Allah. And once this book is brought down to them, then they will be in a position to read it. Otherwise, they are not willing to listen to this Quran before their very eyes and read it. And it's quite interesting that at, at that time, the Quran was being revealed in steps, in portions, and Mu'mineen were learning educating themselves, developing their self and moving forward. Now we got a complete book and we can convince ourselves by reading it that it is a book from Allah, it, can, it is not a product of human mind and still these people read it and do not follow it. Some more comments on this verse. 
we find the same state of affairs across the Muslim world. They all pray day and night when disasters and calamities strike them frequently due to being weak, backward, underdeveloped, and under the subjugation of the secular, powerful nations. And still, they do not study the Quran as a system in order to reach a solution. They are also looking for miracles through their prayers, rituals, and supplications, not very different from what is noted in these verses of, of the Quran. And we can see some of these uh, messages which go around on some of the forums where people still think that if you supplicate this, this is, you will, this is what you will get. If you recite these verses, this is what you will get. So that they don't have to work. Under the sectarian versions of Islam, there are books compiled on all kinds of miracles with such a psyche in place, the pure Quran can never find a place. And the messenger is guided to say to them, Kol subhana rabbi hal kunto illa basharan rasula. So with that, the verse is concluded. Say, my rabbi is above all these demands of yours. Because it has nothing, these miracles have nothing to do with the use of your intellect and it. And, and emotional side in order to solve your problems. And the Quran is providing you guidance for your mind and heart. It is not there to create miracles for you. I am a human being and the messenger. By mentioning the attribute of Rabb, the Quran has summed up the purpose of its guidance for all times. Next point, the system did emerge through the efforts of the messenger plus his companions when they strictly followed the recipe of the Quran, i.e., Iman plus Saleh deeds. The messenger clearly, clearly declares that he is a human being and if he can do it, so can others. So there are instructions through these verses that this happened previously as well. And we should learn to be patient and remain steadfast on the path which is defined by the Quran. Next verse, 1794, Quran wants us to recognize our significance and value as human beings. We know that when you will say to them that I am a human being like you and my duty is to communicate the message of Allah, they will not accept Iman in you because the childishness of the human mind has always kept him in this misconception that the messenger of Allah should be some different kind of creation from human beings. This is the very reason that whenever our guidance reached people, this thing always remained an impediment to their acceptance of that guidance. That why is the bringer of guidance a human being just like other human beings and is not an angel? And even if an angel comes still, they will not accept the guidance of Allah. Further elaboration. In order to reject the Quran, they come up with this excuse that how can a human being like them to be the messenger pointing to the battle system and its problems? They ask for an angel to deliver this message as if they would have listened to him. Human beings do not wish to be disturbed from the state of their convenience and comfort, especially those who are the beneficiaries of the man-made systems. And that is the bottom line we should keep in mind. And if we look at these people who reject the message, actually they are grossly unjust people in their own life. We may not be aware of their injustices and the zulm they do in their own life. The mere fact that once it is logically presented to them and they reject it is that there are some underlying psychological reasons and weaknesses and failures within their own personalities. We come across all kinds of examples on this path. Before coming to the Quran, we do not face any challenges in conforming to what the majority is doing. And we know it. Before coming to the Quran, there were no problems. And if we could play the same tune, everyone will appreciate. In fact, numbers will not be even be a problem. In fact, those who have some status and influence take a lead and promote the, the same belief system which others have we may even get rewarded for our efforts and actions. However, the moment we bring the pure Quran into it to even draw the attention of people to the fact that their path of life is wrong, all kind of abuse is let loose. Human beings don't want to listen to that, that their path is, is wrong because those who are particularly the beneficiaries of the system, they attribute their success to their belief system. They think Allah is very kind on them 
and as a result, they are getting benefits from the man-made system. Here we need to delve deep into the human psyche and the Quran has noted these aspects in various verses. Seeing a human being just like them, picking up the courage to point out to them that their path is creating a visible hell and is the path of blind people according to the Quran. Many even become offended at this. And we do come across this. I've personally come across this kind of offended attitude from others. If we show them the verses where the Quran declares their behavior to be animalistic, they are still very put out. This points to the fact that they do not like Allah and his book. And some of these verses point to this kind of a psyche. Because it is Allah's message towards his people. Those who are students of the Quran, they are passing it on on behalf of Allah. And actually it becomes a requirement or a demand of their iman that they want to pass on the benefits of this message to others. And they know that unless people come to this message, the system of deen cannot be established. And then people do come to it, but in a smaller number initially. Continuing with this verse, we can see from the past and present how much abuse and opposition members of Tulu Islam have faced for talking about the Quran and the system of deen. All these people who like to be called Muslims day and night complain about the corruption of the man-made systems. When their attention is drawn to the Quranic solution, they despise it and become opponents. Why do they do this? Despite suffering under Batil systems, people still have a number of benefits associated with it. For example, they have friendships, relationships, marital relations, job and business related connections, personal interests, political affinities, etc. When they think of these being impacted, even if they are not adversely affected, but even if there is a slight chance inkling of those being affected, they say, oh no, no, this is not for me. If they become inclined towards the Quran, they do not find enough strength to go against the tide. Here the Quran has pointed to one objection only, but elsewhere the Quran has noted other objections as well, which include, for example, threats, verbal abuse, false accusations, lies, false labeling, conspiring against Mu'mineen, and even wars. Let us go to the last verse of today's presentation, 1795. Only a man can be the messenger of mankind. Say to them that men are made messengers and sent for this reason that human beings reside in the world. If it had been the case that Malaika were roaming the earth and were residing there, then we would have made a Malak from heaven as a messenger and sent him down for them. This verse also explains the meanings of jinn. When this word jinn appears with ins, that is with human beings, it is very clear that it is also about human beings who are living a nomadic life or away from the urban areas. Because earth on earth, there is no invisible creation which exists other than the human beings who possess choice and intent. And nobody can Nothing invisible can affect human choice and intent because then it will be injustice. And since there are human beings in the world, hence human beings have to, have to be the messengers. And these human beings have to be from among those human beings to whom the message is to be passed so that they know each other. Finally, a few more reflections. Here Allah has summed up the procedure for conveying the wahi of Allah for mankind, stating that since it is human beings who are residing on earth, hence a human being from among them will be the one to convey the guidance to them. Very simple, straightforward, human beings must convey the message to another human being. And if we as students of the Quran convey the message to others, it is meant to be like this. And they, are, they should not mind it, they should listen to it and then move on if they don't want to accept it. If there were angels residing on earth, then an angel would have been given this responsibility. This clarifies a few more issues as well. The earth is presently occupied by human beings only. Nothing hidden exists. We need to come to terms with this fact of our finite life on this planet and get on with the task of understanding the Quran and then direct our efforts towards the system of deen with our full focus and attention. Nothing invisible 
in this uh, on this planet all human beings are physical and they are very much visible number one number two is that book of guidance is there it is their choice whether they want to follow it or they do not want to follow it there is no scope for miracles there was never any scope for miracles human beings have been given intellect and reasoning prowess and they are meant to use it and quran provides guidance for them and it is a choice if people want to come to the quran it is their choice if they don't want to come to the quran no love lost and that's the end of it any distractions for example caused by various religions and their sects should not be allowed to influence our thinking and that is an important point a very good challenge for us that we should be continuously aware of this that these things should not affect our thinking we are on this path through our own choice if we do not want this choice to be availed we should leave this path and do something else so it is a voluntary thing and we are working as companions of allah as students of the quran and we should stay on this path in in order to get the benefits of the system of deen and lastly from these verses covered today and previously it becomes crystal clear that as human beings we need to use our rational thinking and reasoning prowess to get the best from the quran and al haq has the potential to establish itself through human hands and we know that quran says that haq has arrived and batil will disappear because it is inbuilt within batil that when haq arrives batil does disappear thanks for your time and for sharing this today please feel free to share it with your contacts you may like to subscribe for future talks related to the quranic system of deen thank you